let's recap key migration. Now from this diagram we know that a course has attributes, course ID, course name, number of credits. Section has just one shown attribute, section name and it's the primary key. Okay. However, from our earlier discussions and from common sense, we know that this, the primary key for section is course ID plus section name. Because section name is something like A, 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 B and so on. So you could have many sections of a course and there could be several courses whose section name is AA. Now you make sense of what that section is all about only if you add the course ID to it. Okay. Now unfortunately you cannot add course ID here as an attribute because it is already implicitly an attribute. This is a one-to-many relationship, course and section. It's a one-to-many relationship and therefore course ID is already an attribute in section but we are not showing it because we don't want to add redundancy. Well, if you're not able to show it, then how can you indicate that it's part of the primary key? How do I indicate that course ID is part of the primary key of section? It's exactly for this situation that they've added the key migration notation here. Okay, so when the moment you see this bar here, what it tells you automatically is that the primary key of the entity on the other side of the relationship, namely course, is automatically part of the primary key of this entity type. Okay, so when you look at this diagram, you know that the primary key is not just section name, but it's also course ID. The combination is the primary key. That's what this notation implies. Okay, so that is key migration for us. Course ID is an implicit foreign key attribute, hence it's not shown. However, it's also part of the primary key. And the way to show that is by adding the key migration notation. Let's take a look at another example of key migration. We say a bill, a company has many buildings and each building has many rooms. Okay. Now let's assume that this company has installed a lot of different assets in each room. Assets may be, you know, projectors, computers, all kinds of things, and they want to track where they've installed what. So because of that, they need a way by which they can track every single room. Okay, and it says the company has assigned each building a unique building ID and it stores the building's square footage, GPS coordinate and height for each building. Then we are also told that each building has many rooms and each room has a room number. However, room numbers are only unique within a building not across buildings. In other words, you could have a room number 100 or a room number 200 in building 1 as well as in building 5 as well as in building 10. We know that this is common sense, right? This happens all the time. The same room number occurs in many different buildings. Okay, so the room number by itself cannot uniquely identify a room. To uniquely identify a room across the company, we have to also mention the building ID. So we can say room number 100 of building 10. That uniquely identifies which room we are talking about. If you simply say room number 100, there's no idea what room we are talking about. It could be in any of those buildings. Let's try to represent this situation. Okay, this situation is shown here. We've got three buildings and each of those three buildings has a room number 301, room number 501 and of course many other rooms. Okay, so if you just say room number 501, it's not clear which room we are talking about. However, if we say building 200 room 501, we know that we are talking about this room. Or if we say building 300 room 501, we know we are talking about this room. Okay, that's the same scenario that we talked about earlier, like courses and sections. Okay, so how do you represent this? So the primary key for room is the combination of building ID and room number. Okay, the room number itself alone cannot be the primary key for room because across the, the company, the same room number occurs many different times. It occurs in every single building. But the moment you take the combination, then you get a unique room number. Okay, you identify a room uniquely. So the building ID plus room number is the primary key for room. Okay, so our relationship looks like this now. You've got the entity type building, building ID, area, height. I also intended to add the GPS 
coordinates I've missed that here and you've got room okay and we've got a relationship I've just said you may have some buildings which have no rooms in them why it may be a factory building in which case you have factory floors and not rooms okay however every room has to be in a building and of course a building can have many rooms but every room has to be in one building so building has non-obligatory participation in this relationship room has obligatory participation that's fine and we understand the crowfoot because a building can have many rooms okay but as we've already pointed out what is the primary key of room we have said already that room number by itself cannot be the primary key of room and therefore in order to make the primary key for room we also have to have the building id so in order to have a primary key for the room you need the room number but you also need the building id and that's exactly what the key migration notation is telling us that with the moment you look at this diagram you know that room number is part of the primary key for room but the moment you see the key migration notation you also know that building id makes up the primary key of this room this uh, entity type okay so that's the idea of the key migration notation the primary key is room number plus building id and we've seen the key migration notation from before let's now see a short let's see key migration how to do key migration notation in oracle data modeler i'm starting up oracle data modeler as usual it comes up with this question <coughs> we'll go ahead and create the very same example of building and room to show this if you're not interested as before as I said if you're not interested in the relational model here so the logical model is already shown I'm going to go ahead and add my first entity call it building and I'm going to create the attributes here building ID and we already know it's the primary key another attribute I'm going to call it uh, the GPS coordinates of the building let's say that's that's a an optional attribute and then we're going to have the total floor area of the building let's say that's a mandatory attribute And let's say the address of the building, which is also an optional attribute. So that's fine. So we've got some. Uh, I know this is a little different from the from what I showed on the slide, but I've just made up something else now. Let's go ahead and add the room attribute. And go directly to the attributes here, the room entity type, I'm sorry. Uh, we go to attributes and then we call it room number it's a primary key and then let's say the floor area, floor area of the room which let's say is mandatory let's say that's all we want for room so we've got the building and the room now we want to create a one-to-many relationship between these two now we could go ahead and just create a regular one-to-many relationship but we also want the key migration to take place okay so let me first show you the key migration uh, the way to do directly key migration so then you show choose this one to n identifying relationship okay not the regular one to n relationship but one to n identifying relationship okay so click on that and then start from the one side of the relationship and click on the many side of the relationship okay so once again notice that source is building target is room source to target cardinality is many target to source cardinality is one that's great is source optional yes because we already said a building may not have any rooms target is optional no because a room must be in some building or other Right. Notice that the system automatically determined this for us because we chose identifying 
relationship. Okay. Notice here, identifying is checked. In fact, this is what it will be responsible for giving us the key migration notation. So now if I say OK, you see the relationship we get. We get the crow foot, but we also get the key migration notation. OK, so that's the idea here. So now uh, this is how you create it. Now suppose, uh, in fact, let's go quickly inside Rome and take a look at its attributes. Okay, so room number, primary key. Let's go to building ID. Remember, we didn't add building ID as a foreign key. It got added because of the one-to-many relationship. If you click on building ID, you notice that it also is shown as the primary key. So when you look at this, you know that the primary key is room number and building ID. Building ID. Okay, remember, building ID was an attribute that we didn't add at all. It's an implicit foreign key attribute that came along because of the one-to-many relationship. But because we said that this is an identifying one-to-many relationship, in other words, we want key migration, it said, okay, I'll make this also the primary key. Okay, now suppose for some reason, let's delete this relationship. It's easy to delete. Just click and press the delete key. Say you want to delete it, yes. Suppose I had created just a regular one-to-many relationship, not the identifying one-to-many relationship, okay? So maybe sometimes you're drawing a diagram, you don't realize that you want key migration, and later on you realize you want key migration. You don't have to go delete it and redo the relationship. You can just edit it. That's what I'm going to show you. So here I'm just showing a regular one-to-many relationship. Sorry. Click on the one-to-many Okay, now this is showing you a regular one-to-many relationship, right? The cardinality is fine, but it's showing both source and target as optional. Okay, but we know the target is not optional. Every room must be in a building, so I check that, uncheck that. Uh, now, suppose we just create the relationship like this. Okay, so now we've got a run-of-the-mill one-to-many relationship, but however, later on I realize I want key migration here. It's an easy matter to add it. I can always go to the relationship, select it. I can double click and edit the relationship or alternately I can right click on it and then say properties and edit the relationship. And then all I can do, all I need to do is to go here and check on identifying and we get the key migration notation. Okay, so relationship in fact, although they've given you all of these different number of icons to create relationships, you can actually create any one of them and go and edit and change it to be the relationship type that you want, right? You can change the uh, participation, mandatory or not. You can change the cardinality, source to target, target to source, right? So you can change all of that and therefore, no matter what relationship you created, you can always change it by going and setting values for all of those attributes. Okay, now that you've drawn a diagram, you, if you want to save the diagram, not just save the diagram, but save the design itself, you can do that. You can do file, save, and you can give a file. Okay, I'm, I'm going to call it, uh, this is just a name for my design. Okay, so now the design is actually saved. I can go back later, open the design file, and then I'll see the all the diagrams that I made in that particular design. Okay, so apart from just exporting the diagram, print diagram the way I had indicated earlier, well, if you just print the diagram, then all you're left with is the diagram image file, right? Suppose you say, I've done half my work, I want to save, come back tomorrow and continue, right? In that case, saving the diagram doesn't help you. In that case, you need to save the design so that you can return to the design and come and continue to edit it. So for example, I've saved it. I can close it now. And let's say the next day I come back, open up data modeler. And then I can here come here and say file. I can say open, or in fact, it will show recent designs. And I can select the recent design building room and just say OK to this and it comes up with your design. You can now go and edit this design.
which you could not have done if you had simply saved the image.